And so the first question I think we have to ask ourselves is, was there a war in Gaza? And that's actually an important question because Israel justified the death and destruction in Gaza by saying that it confronted, and now I'm using its phrase, an asymmetric war in Gaza. And many of Israel's defenders said, yes, there was a lot of death and destruction in Gaza, but that happens in the fog of war. That is, there's lots of confusion on the battlefield, split-second decisions have to be made, and so inevitably, if regrettably, innocents get killed, and there's a lot of destruction. So when we use the word war to describe what happened in Gaza, we're already setting a context which can easily become propaganda if, in fact, it wasn't a war. Well, what did happen in Gaza? After those 22 days, those 22 days that Amnesty International called the 22 days of death and destruction, Israel was very proud of what happened because it said, now we have shown the Arabs who's who and what's what. We've erased the memory of the July-August 2006 defeat in Lebanon. And now they said, we've restored our deterrence capacity, the Arab fear of us, because we won the war in Gaza. Well, as they boasted about having won the war in Gaza, an Israeli strategic analyst came along and he wrote in an Israeli paper, he said, it is very dangerous for Israel to believe it won the war when there was no war. In reality, not a single battle was fought during the 22 days of fighting. A former Israeli ministry official said, there was no war. Hamas sat in its bunkers and came out when it was all over. Well, if there was no war in Gaza, what did happen? It's fairly clear what happened militarily. Israel flew about 3,000 combat missions over Gaza. Every plane came back, none was downed, none was even damaged. That's not too surprising because Hamas had no anti-aircraft defenses. It took as much courage to fly a combat mission over Gaza as it does to fight, as it does to shoot fish in a barrel. That was the first week the air assault. And then, beginning the second week, Israel launched its land and air assault, its ground and air assault. Well, the Israeli soldiers were equipped with special night fighting equipment. Hamas couldn't even see them, let alone do battle with them. So what did happen? Well, we have the very clear testimony of probably the best possible witnesses, namely the Israeli soldiers themselves. After those 22 days of death and destruction, many Israeli soldiers testified to what they experienced. So let me quote them. Soldier, there was nothing there ghost towns, except for some livestock, nothing moved. Soldier, most of the time it was boring. There were not really too many events. 
soldier. I did not see one single Arab the whole time we were there, that whole week. Soldier. Everyone was disappointed about not engaging anyone. Soldier. Usually we did not see a single living soul, except for our soldiers, of course, not a soul. Soldier. Go ahead and ask the other soldiers how often they encountered combatants in Gaza. Nothing. No one. Soldier. There was supposed to be a tiny resistance force upon entry, but there just wasn't. No soldiers, no enemy in the field, no engagement, no battles. But that's only half the story. The other half is equally illuminating. All you have to do to see for yourself is go to your computers and enter under, under Google, breaking the silence. And what will come up on your screen is a collection, one of the collection, collections of soldier testimonies. And then when it comes up on your screen, just enter under the, the search function, enter the word insane. And if you enter the word insane once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, the soldiers who are interviewed keep using the word insane. Israel used insane amounts of firepower in Gaza. Israel used insane amounts of firepower in Gaza. Israel used insane amounts of firepower in Gaza. The soldiers were interviewed separately. They weren't cueing each other, but the same word leapt to mind for each soldier insane amounts of firepower in Gaza. No enemy in the field, no battles, no Arabs to be seen, Arab fighters to be seen anywhere, but they're using insane amounts of firepower. One soldier said, this was firepower such as I had never known. There were blasts all the time. The earth was constantly shaking. Another soldier said, on the ground you hear these thunderous blasts all day long. I mean, not just tank shelling, which was a tune we'd long gotten used to, but blasts that actually rock the outpost to the extent that some of us were ordered out of the house we were quartered in for fear it would collapse. The Israeli soldiers commandeered Palestinian homes, and from the homes they were firing into the horizon. But the blasts were shaking the ground so much that they were told to leave the homes they had commandeered for fear they would collapse. Actually, the soldiers themselves were probably the most creative in finding the right metaphors to describe what happened. One soldier said, it felt like hunting season had begun. Sometimes it reminded me of PlayStation computer game. Another soldier said, you feel like a child playing around with a magnifying glass, burning up ants. Now, I was a kid once, and I had my magnifying glass, and I did burn up ants. I'm not proud of it, but at least I didn't suffer from the delusion that I was engaged in a war with the ants. And in fact, it was like burning up ants in Gaza. The metaphor was very precise and apt. Israel dropped white phosphorus on Gaza. I never paid much attention to the white phosphorus, the fine details. It's one of Israel's stock and trades, the white phosphorus. But this time, 
I start to read the fine details. I'm not sure how many of you know much about it. It reaches a temperature of 800 degrees Celsius, 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. As Oprah Winfrey would say, try to wrap your mind around that. 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. If you think it's hot outside today, it's 82 degrees Fahrenheit. What did the Israel do with the white phosphorus? Human Rights Watch wrote a report called Rain of Fire. It said that Israel repeatedly exploded white phosphorus munitions in the air over populated areas, killing and injuring civilians and damaging civilian structures. They dropped the white phosphorus on a school, a market, a humanitarian aid warehouse. They dropped it on Al Quds Hospital. They dropped it on Al Wafa Hospital. The hospitals, said Human Rights Watch, were clearly marked, and there does not appear to have been fighting in that immediate area. What happened in Gaza was not a war, and each time any of you uses the locution war, to describe what happened in Gaza. You become an agent, wittingly or unwittingly, you become an agent of Israeli propaganda. There was no war in Gaza. There was a massacre in Gaza. 1,400 Palestinians were killed, of whom up to four-fifths were civilians. 358 were children. Thirteen Israelis were killed, of whom ten were combatants, and half of the combatants were killed by, inadvertently by other Israeli soldiers, friendly fire. So, a hundred Palestinians were killed for each Israeli. Four hundred Palestinian civilians were killed for each Israeli civilian. Those are not the statistics of a war. Those are the statistics of a massacre. Second decisions have to be made. And so inevitably, if regrettably, innocents get killed and there's a lot of destruction. So when we use the word war to describe... And so the first question I think we have to ask ourselves is, was there a war in Gaza? And that's actually an important question because Israel justifies said, yes, there was a lot of death and destruction in Gaza, but that happens in the fog of war. That is, there's lots of confusion on the battlefield, splits what happened in Gaza. We're already setting a context which can easily become propaganda if, in fact, it wasn't a war. Well, what did hide the death and destruction in Gaza by saying that it confronted, and now I'm using its phrase, an asymmetric war in Gaza? And many of Israel's defenders